This video is brought to you by jvjujitsuonline.com, the home to all JV Jiu Jitsu content, your source for strike based Jiu Jitsu. Check it out. Welcome to the Master Plan Lecture Series. My name is Javier Vasquez, and today we will be discussing strategical basics, the differences in strategy, part three, the central path. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start from side mount, and I want to discuss the thinking behind the strategy. Side mount is the central hub. You can reach any core ground position from the central hub. The central hub is where the offense can begin. The central hub starts the meat grinder. You have two options in the meat grinder. Option one is to get consumed by the meat grinder and exhaust. And option two, you turn your back. The rear naked choke can be secured from a chest to back connection. Turtle and back mount make up chest to back and they are linked through this chest to back connection. The rear naked choke is the most efficient and successful jujitsu submission. It ranks number one as the most used submission in the UFC. The rear naked choke accounts for 48.96% of all submissions in the UFC. And the goal of the master plan is to get to chest to back and become masters of the rear naked choke. So let's discuss the two most common routes to the back mount and the rear naked choke submission. The first route is to use the master plan route. The second route is the traditional route, which transitions you from side mount to mount and from mount to the back. Both routes have a turning transition that are initiated from two different positions. I want to discuss the importance of controlling the twisting transition in each one of these positions. Side mount and turtle, of course, are linked through this twisting transition. Turtle top is a great place to trap the opponent's arm. It is a great place to get to an optimized finishing position, or an OFP. There is no rush to insert hooks and transition to the back mount. The legs add mobility and are an effective arm trapping tool. Crumble mechanics generate fatigue as well as force the opponent's hands and elbows to base on the ground. Controlling the far side hip with your hand lures opponent's hands to the magical place. The transition to turtle sitting is readily available. Let's discuss the meat grinder. Control the turning transition between side mount and turtle in either direction. This generates fatigue and forces opponent into the highlighted positions. Arm traps and chokes are available during the turn. The systems of the meat grinder. Arm isolation strategies are attacked when the opponent's arms are spread apart. The legs control one arm and the arms and the head control the other arm. Arm isolation strategies start to generate a turn to quarter side mount front or quarter side mount rear. Attack the figure four baking pattern when opponent's arms are close together. The figure four baking pattern along with constant wrist pinning strategies are utilized to drain and fatigue an opponent. This frustration leads the opponent to turn their back. The panic felt during the turning transition is what opens up opportunities for arm traps. There are more reasonable arm trap entries from the turtle top than from back mount offense. The transition to turtle front opens up the front choke series. Once hooks are inserted and the back mount position is stabilized, hand control is prioritized. Hand fights to get to absolute advantage or an optimized finishing position, an OFP, are prioritized. Once an absolute advantage, you have an up to 80% chance of finishing success. Once in an OFP, the chances of finishing goes up to 95%. So that was my video on strategical basics, the differences in strategy, part three, the central path. So this is where we discuss the master plan strategy 
and what the difference is between what we're doing and what traditional BJJ schools are doing. We force a transition from side mount into the turtle position, controlling the twisting transition. And then once in the turtle, we trap the arm and attack the neck. We also have the option of inserting the hooks, then trapping the arm and attacking the neck. So I believe that this difference in strategy creates a huge difference in efficiency as well as a huge difference in effectiveness. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys real soon.